Normally, if you're trying to solve a mystery, if you can gather more information and gather more evidence, it will make it easier for you to solve that mystery. But in today's story, that's not the case. You have a whole family that suddenly goes missing under very suspicious circumstances, and 10 years later, we still have no clue what happened to them, despite a plethora of information and evidence gathered, including a very famous videotape that shows them walking in a trance-like state right before they go missing. But before we get into that family story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place, because that's all I do, and I upload three, four, even five times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please replace the like button shampoo with Nair hair remover, and also subscribe to my channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of those weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. Sherilyn, who was 40, and their daughter, Madison, who was six years old, were living in Eufaula, Oklahoma, on lakefront property. While they seemed to be living a simple and happy life, behind the scenes, their life was in turmoil. Bobby suffered from bad chronic back pain that he had as a result of a car accident that he was in in 2003. Sherilyn was bipolar. She was medicated for it, but she didn't always take her meds, causing her to lash out at her family members, and it caused bouts of severe depression. Bobby and Sherilyn also believed that their house was haunted by three or four spirits who lived on their roof. Bobby was so convinced of this that he went to his pastor and asked where he could buy special bullets that he could shoot at these spirits. So for all of these reasons, the Jameson family was actually looking to leave their property in Eufaula and move somewhere else and hopefully start all over again fresh with a new shot at happiness. After the Jamesons would vanish, their family and friends would say, we had no idea any of this was happening. We had no idea they were even considering a move. Now, this move they were considering was not a typical move. They were not looking to move into another house. They were looking to move onto a piece of property where they could place their storage container and live in the storage container until at some point they were going to build a house on a mountain and then move into the house. And they had actually already found a plot of land about 30 miles away from where they were currently living in a town called Red Oak. Now, the storage container itself that they planned on living in was actually sitting on their property in Eufaula, and it drew a lot of attention from the neighbors because Sherilyn would graffiti on it. The neighbors have poisoned our cats. Witches don't like it when you kill their cats because it turns out Sherilyn believed that she was a witch. So unsurprisingly, the neighbors avoided the Jameson family at all cost. Several weeks before the Jameson family went missing, they actually brought in a male boarder. So a guy that was going to live with them and help with manual labor in exchange for room and board. The boarder was a white supremacist that immediately took exception to Sherilyn, who was part Native American. And so anytime Bobby was out of the house, the white supremacist boarder would get into a fight with Sherilyn. And one day it came to a head and Sherilyn drew a gun on the border and said to leave the property or she was going to shoot him. The border refused to leave. And so Sherilyn began firing shots into the ground at his feet until he left. Now, once the Jameson family disappeared, this white supremacist border became one of the primary suspects. But when the FBI found him, he had a rock solid alibi and was quickly crossed off the list of potential suspects. On October 8th, 2009, Bobby, Sherilyn, their daughter Madison, and their dog, Maisie, load up the truck and they start driving towards Red Oak. They were apparently going to go scout out this piece of property that they wanted to purchase to, to live on with the storage container. Now, according to family and friends, it was not uncommon for the Jamesons to vanish for several days at a time without telling anybody where they went, and it would turn out that they would go into the woods for these retreats where they would get away from technology in the city. When they were gone for a few days and no one had heard from them, no one thought twice about it. On top of this, Bobby and Sherilyn had informed Madison's school that they'd be pulling her out of class because they were going to be moving. So when Madison didn't show up for school, the school did not raise any alarms because they assumed she'd been pulled out of school. On October 16th, 2009, eight days after the Jamesons had left their house to go scout out this property in Red Oak, a couple of hunters in the Panola Mountains, which is near Red Oak, found the Jamesons' truck parked on the side of the road. 
Now these hunters are in the middle of nowhere, which means the truck is in the middle of nowhere. And so as they're walking over to it, they're expecting to see the owner of the truck. But as they get over to the truck, there is no owner anywhere. They called out a couple times to see if they could get this person's attention or whoever it was that owned it, and no one came over to them. They look in the truck and they see there is this very sick looking dog sitting on the back seat. It would turn out it was the Jameson's dog. It was Maisie. Now the windows were up and the truck was locked. So the hunters called the police. Police show up, they break a window and they get Maisie out of the truck. They give her food and water and she would end up making a full recovery. They look in the vehicle and all of the Jameson's personal effects are in there. Their phones, their wallets, their jackets, their clothes. Underneath the front seat was $32,000 of cash in a bank bag. Also, they found this weird letter written by Sherilyn to Bobby that was this 11-page hate letter that basically accused Bobby of being a hermit, which seems like a strange thing to ramble for 11 pages about, but either way. The police did an initial search of the area looking for the Jameson family, but they couldn't find them. And so the running theory was they must have pulled over and walked into the woods for some reason, got turned around, and they're just lost and we need to go find them. The police were able to use the cell phones that had been left inside of the vehicle and were able to use their GPS locations and track where the phones had been before coming to rest inside of this vehicle. And they saw that the cell phones had actually gone up the trail a little ways. They had been up towards the top of the mountain for about 15 minutes before coming back down and then wound up in the truck where they were when they were found. So the police walk up the hill to where the GPS said they had been and they find all these footprints that look to be Madison's because it's a child's footprint as well as probably Bobby's and Sherilyn's. But they're nowhere to be found and there's no clue of where they went after being up there. When they started scanning through each of the cell phones to see if there was any information about where they might have gone, they found on Bobby's phone a picture of Madison that was taken up at that little location that the GPS took them. The picture of Madison has been hot contested on the internet for a long time now. It's hard to tell in the image if Madison is happy or sad. It's also unclear based on her body language if her parents are taking the photo or if this was kind of staged by someone else. So between the GPS showing that they had been at the top of this mountain at one point, plus the picture of Madison confirming she had at least been up there, the police started this massive search with that section on the mountain where they had been standing as kind of the center point. And they searched all around the Panola Mountains. But after after an extensive search of this new area, they didn't find anything, no new leads had come in, so ultimately the search was called off. Four years later, in November of 2013, some hikers were in the Panola Mountains, about five kilometers, maybe a little bit less, from where the Jameson truck was found, and they come across skeletal remains of three individuals that looked like two adults and a child. They were laying face down, side by side, and it was clear that they were not complete skeletons, but there was enough there to know for sure that these are people. As soon as the police were called, everybody assumed this has to be the Jameson family. It would actually take almost a year before they were able to confirm that yes, those bones are in fact the Jameson family. While the Oklahoma medical examiner was not able to determine a cause of death because the remains were just partial, they didn't have enough to work with, they did see that there was a big hole in the back of Bobby's skull and there was other holes in some of the other bones that many people assumed were from bullets, but it was never determined if that actually was what it was from. As soon as it came out that it was the Jameson family, remains, the first prominent theory was that this had to have been a murder-suicide, where Sherilyn, who was mad at Bobby, she wrote that hate-filled 11-page letter that was found in the car. You know, she's unstable from not taking her medication to combat her bipolar disorder. She seems like the person that would take her family out and then turn on herself. But all of her family said she would never harm her daughter. I mean, maybe she would have harmed Bobby, but she never would have harmed her daughter. Also, why would you have brought your dog along and left your dog in the car and $32,000 of cash in the car. So that doesn't fit that scenario at all. The next theory was, well, maybe they just pulled over, walked into the woods for some reason, and then got lost and died of exposure. And that's still definitely a possible theory, except at the time they went missing, the temperatures were very mild. They were not dropping below freezing at night. It didn't rain very much. So it was kind of perfect conditions to be lost in the woods. It would have taken quite a while for them to die from exposure. And if you add in the fact that they were searching that area that they were found in pretty extensively within a few days of them going missing. If they had been lost and were only a few kilometers from the road, they would have been found in that search, but they weren't. The next theory that friends and family of the Jameson family predominantly believe is they were kidnapped. That maybe, you know, they were driving on that road and someone flagged them down, whether it was someone they knew or someone that did not seem threatening that caused them to get out of their car and come over to them. 
leaving their car the way it was with all of their belongings inside and with their dog inside, shut the door, they're not threatened. They walk over to this person or this group and then something happens where they are either against their will or they're complicit and they walk into the woods never to go back to their truck and then they ultimately pass away in the woods just a few kilometers away. However, none of those theories can account for the very bizarre video footage that they have of the Jameson family on the day they left their house to go check out the property in Red Oak. So on October 8th, 2009, the video shows Bobby and Cheryl Lynn making multiple trips, about 20 or more, from their house to their truck, where they're loading gear into their truck. But they appear to be almost in a trance, which is what the sheriff said when he first saw the video. They're walking back and forth, and they're carrying their stuff into the truck, but periodically they're making trips without carrying anything. They're just walking to the truck with nothing in hand, looking at the truck, and then walking back to the house. And then they come back out, and they have something in their hands, and then the next trip they have nothing. And periodically on their trek back and forth, they would just stop and just turn and look off into the distance, not interacting with each other. Bobby and Sherilyn haven't spoken to each other at all. They're just doing this weird trance-like commute back and forth between truck and house before ultimately they load up the truck and they do leave. A lot of people speculated that, well, it looks like Bobby and Sherilyn must have been using drugs. But when they first found the truck and they searched the Jameson's truck and they searched the Jameson family house, there was no traces of drugs anywhere and their family said there's no history of drug abuse. There was also a theory that perhaps the Jameson family got tied up in a cult and that that was why they were moving and they were going to live this minimalist lifestyle and they had brought cash to, you know, give to this cult. But in fact, they had actually been the target of the cult and that was what led to their demise. Or maybe they were complicit and they wanted to sacrifice themselves or something, but no one really knows. So these are only a handful of the theories of what could have happened to the Jameson family. So what I want to know is, do you agree with any of them? Or do you have your own theory of what could have happened to the Jameson family? Let me know in the comments. I will get back to all the early commenters. So get in there and give me your best theories. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, then if you haven't done this already, please replace the like button shampoo with Nair hair remover. Also, please subscribe to my channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. If you want to get in touch with me, you can direct message me on Instagram or on Twitter. My username on both those platforms is johnballin416. I also have a ton of content on TikTok where my username is Mr. Ballin. And if you have a story suggestion, whether it's your own or if it's just a suggestion, please submit it to our subreddit that's just called Mr. Ballin. It's linked in the description below. So whether I see you on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, YouTube, some combination, just know that I really appreciate your support. And until next time, guys, that's going to do it. See ya.